Hey, online family, I cannot wait to jump into God's word with you today. But before we do, a couple of things I need you to know about. We got Easter weekend coming up. It's gonna be the biggest weekend of the year here. I hope you see. We got five services. We got a Good Friday service and we got a Sunday morning. But this is why this Easter is even more special. We got Spanish services. We're gonna have a Spanish service just on Good Friday and another one on Sunday morning. It is going to be the place to be here this weekend. But for more information about that, go to our website, click on the God is Good banner for more information so that you can stay connected and be a part of that amazing weekend. But I don't know about you, but I'm excited to jump in God's word together. So let's get ready. Here we go. Hallelujah. Whew. The anointing is pretty strong up here. I don't know if it is down there, but it was when I was sitting there. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. For the word of the Lord came unto me, and I'm supposed to deliver that to you this morning. So I'm going to give that this morning. For I've called you out of darkness into my marvelous light. For I am raising up an army that will not delay, but will go forth that are called by my name and will operate in my spirit and by my power. And the world will see in you my power as you go forth in your obedience and follow me in my direction and my voice. And you'll see the glory of the Lord in the earth like never before. For that mighty army I've called and you are a part of that army. For I've called you out of that darkness for a reason and a purpose, so that you could take my word forth into this dark world. For the only way that they will see salvation is through the power of my word. And I will speak it forth as you go forth out of your mouth, and they will see the power of God in this earth. Do not delay, do not be afraid, for in this last day, as I move upon the earth, as I plan my plan, they will see surely the glory of the Lord and the power of my spirit as you go forth in obedience. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> my, 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 my. Mm. God is good, isn't he? I would like to uh, say something about the pastors here. You know, the Bible says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And even though they won't show the pressure that comes against them. Pastors have a lot of pressure on their lives. And the Lord wanted me to tell you to get behind your pastors like never before and pray for them. Because the rim that we can't see in the spiritual rim, there are enemies trying to take them out and take them down, just like they do all of us. And so I highly encourage you to pray for them, to get behind them, to be with them, to tell them we're behind you. Not only with our gifts and our talents, but our finances. You know, I'm thinking, pastor's talking about finances. <laughs> and it's just like tithe. What is a tithe? 10 cents on a dollar. 10 cents. When you look at it like that, it ain't much, is it? We got to give God 10 cents of every dollar? My goodness, that's a lot. 10 cents. Everybody say 10 cents. You know, when you look at it like that, I need some water, please. Thank you very much. I open my mouth, my mouth dries out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's get behind them. 
There's a lot of responsibility that is on their life. I know I pastored for over 20 years, and man, it takes, it takes a lot to pastor a church. And they, didn't, they don't know I'm saying this, but we need to give them 100% back, backing, backing them. Let them know that we love them and appreciate them. You know, I've had pastors say, your, your kids went to Santa Fe and started a church? Are they nuts? I wouldn't go there if God came to me in person. I mean, he'd have to come to me in person and talk to me to go to Santa Fe to start a church. This ground is hard. And it takes people like them who love God, who are sincere. They may not be perfect, but they are sincere. Let me tell you something. If they weren't, I wouldn't be here. I'd get on them. I don't mess around. I'm serving God with my whole heart. And they better get with the program. Or I'll, I'll, get, I'll tell them. Amen. I can tell them I'm their daddy. <laughs> well, I mean, at least my daughter, my son-in-law, he's my son-in-law, but I'm his father-in-law, but they're right on. And I tell you what, it could, be, it could happen this quick, snap of a finger, that if we don't obey, don't obey, obey God, that God can move them out somewhere else. And this church will go down. The responsibility of this church is on them. And if they go down, guess what? The whole thing going down. Now, it's not going to go down. In fact, <laughs> They have a vision that just, it's amazing. I mean, this pastor, Larry, Pastor Larry, you guys got a no-quit attitude. Jeez, sometimes he, he kind of sets me in place. But I've, that's what I've always admired about him and Rachel is that they're going to do this. They're going to do this. They're going to accomplish what God's told them to do. They came from California to start this church in Santa Fe. God, oh boy. Boy, do you need prayer. We love Santa Fe, don't we? That's why we live here. And, and God sent us his best. God sent someone that would say, you know what? I'm going to, we're going to go to Santa Fe. We're going to follow God and obey God. It doesn't matter how hard the ground is. They have the attitude the tenacity to say it doesn't matter how dark it is, we're going. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank God for pastors like this that will follow God. And I'm not saying that because I'm related to him. I'm saying it because it's true. Otherwise, I wouldn't be saying this. I don't just say things. Hallelujah. Well, God's good, isn't he? God is good. Say God is good. Now, I'm up here, and, and uh, you know, I, uh, I need someone to join in with me. Say amen once in a while. You know, I get a little nervous. Uh, you know, as they say in Texas, here's a Texas man. Look, he's got his, got his cowboy boots on. As they say in Texas, I'm like a long, I'm as nervous as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Yes, sir. -y. That's what they say in Texas. Don't they? Now, I'm not nervous. I just wanted to try to break the ice here, get some of you to smile at me. Amen. It's okay to laugh in Santa Fe. I said it's okay to laugh in Santa Fe. Well, you don't know what I'm going through. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Put a smile on your face. Put your shoulders back, hold your head up high, and begin to praise God and trust God, and he'll bring you out of every situation. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care. It doesn't matter how brutal it is. If we will trust God, get that word trust. If we'll trust God, he'll bring us out of that stuff. I know, I've been serving Jesus for 45 years, and I've seen it when I get serious with God, guess what? He gets serious with us. 
the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, a heartfelt prayer of a righteous man, avails much. And I've seen in my times over the, over the years of serving him that when I get serious with him, man, he comes through. He has come through so many times. But, well, he has it for me. Well, hold on. Trust him. Believe in him. Trust his, his word, and he will bring you through it. Amen. I'll get to preaching here in a minute. Now, I was, <laughs> I was walking through the house, and uh, a lot of times, you know, we Christians, <laughs> I guess I better get my glasses on. I'm sorry. I apologize. So I can see something. Oh, there is somebody out there. How about that? And uh, as I was walking through the house, I had my Bible in my hand, and uh, <laughs> this came to me. It says, in, that, in other words, well, I'll tell you what. I, I had my Bible like this, and I said, yep. I was trying to kind of be funny, you know. My wife was sitting there. This is my Bible. What is it for? To sit on the table and draw, and draw dust forevermore. Huh? Now I'm going to make a point. This is my Bible. What is it for? To sit on the coffee table and draw dust forevermore. Is that what it's for? What is it for? Huh? It's to read it, study it, be an doer of it. Now, how many of you brought your Bibles? Raise them up. Well, there's a few. Where's the rest of them? It's on the table. <laughs> Folks, I'm just kidding. I'm trying to be funny. Okay. I know you have your phones, and they have the Bible on it. But there is a point there, isn't there? It's, to, it's not to draw dust, but it's to get it out and to study it and read it. Amen. Amen. I said amen. amen. I said amen. 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 Well, you better not sing, Pastor. <laughs> Just as our body needs physical food, our spirit man needs spiritual food. And well, I tell you what, we don't mess around when it comes to physical food, do we? When it comes to feeding that body, boy, we'll feed that body. And I can just imagine if we could see in the rim of the spirit that we would see a lot of skinny Christians. Spiritually. Their spirits are weak, shriveled up, needing some food. Why? Because they haven't fed their spirit. Now we can see on the outside that, boy, I mean, we feed her pretty good, don't we? Amen. But on the inside, our spirits need to be fed. The pastor's been talking about love, the love of God. That love isn't love until you give it away. But we have to understand also, I want to add to that, not only do we give it away, more than, it's got to be more than just once. It's got to be a lifestyle or a continuation of giving that love to a lost and dying world and to your spouse or to your family or to whoever. Whoever. Love isn't love until it's given away. We've got to give it away. What does John 3, 16 say? For God so loved the world that he gave. What did he give? He gave his, he, he gave his best, didn't he? Right. Amen. Right. 
The Bible says, you don't have to turn there, and it won't be on the screen. Now, the scriptures that I'll be sharing will be on the screens, most of them. But for time's sake, the Bible says in Psalms chapter 8 and verse 4, What is man that thou art mindful of him? I looked up that word mindful, and in the Hebrews it says, the word Hebrews, Z-A-K-E-R, it means to mark or remember. What is man that thou art mindful of him? To mark or remember continually, how, how often? Continually, as perpetual incense rising, to set the heart upon to keep continually in merciful view. How many, how many is glad that God's continually keeping you in merciful view? Does anybody need a little more mercy? Well, I'll take your leftovers because I need a lot of extra. I know you don't, you pretty little thing sitting there. You know, Joe, Pastor Joe's looking at this, so innocent there. Dear God, if anybody needs it, he does. I told her I'd get you. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> we all need his merciful view. But the thing I wanted to get across is, is God is mindful of you. In other words, his mind is full of you. You can see from the very beginning of time, he created everything, the universe, the star, everything that in it, the earth, and the fullness thereof. For what? For you and I. He loves you, but he not only loves you, he is in love with you. you. Folks, you've got to see yourself that God is in love with you. He's not got a bat to go around and beat us over the head. Are you kidding me? He's a loving father. If we can love our children, how much more does he love us? And he knows how to do it, brother. He knows how to love. He loves us, but his mind is full of you. He is continually thinking about you. Everything he does, he does for you and I. His mind is full of you. Say, God's mind. Say it like you mean it. God's mind is full of me. Now, when I first got saved, no way I could comprehend that. But as I began to... Fellowship with God and fellowship in his word and begin to spend time with him. I begin to see, well, everything he did, he did for me. I mean, I'm special. I don't know about you, but I'm special. Of course you're special. I'm just joking when I say I don't know about you. You're special. Are you kidding me? For God to shed, for Jesus to shed his blood for you at Calvary, there ain't, there's no way in the world we can comprehend the suffering he did on that cross. There's no way. He suffered. That's why he sweat as great drops of blood. Man, the, the pain and the agony of hanging on that tree, disgraceful. God himself, the, the God of glory, has come down on the earth and hung on a cross for you and I. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior this morning, we're going to give a call at the end of the service and God's going to save you and make you a new creation. He loves you. He is for you. He's not against you. If God be for you, who can be against us? God is for us. We can see through his word as we study his word, as we feed our spirits upon his word. He is for us and not against us. I don't care how bad the situation is. It doesn't matter. You and I have to come to the place where we are at the place where we, do, we are not going to blame God for anything. When you, start, when you get to that place of, I'm not going to blame God for anything, you're, you're growing. But we want to blame God for this. We want to blame God for lack. We want to blame God for sickness. We want to blame God for this and that. God is not the blame. God is the answer. Jesus is the answer for the world today. God is the answer. 
I have so much to say in very little time. So hear with spiritual ears. Hear what the Spirit is saying because God wants you and I to understand some things this morning. How does God give his love away in the earth? Through us. The only Jesus that they're going to see is what they see in you. I said the only Jesus. Now think about how urgent this is, how important it is that we walk according to his word. The only Jesus that they're going to see in you is what they see in you. Uh, what, uh, the only Jesus that they're going to see is what they see in you. That's why it's so important that we walk in love. So in order for us to be successful and fulfill his will in the earth, we are going to have to be spiritually minded or spirit conscious. Now, these scriptures are going to be up here for you to read. And I'm going to go through a few of these real quickly. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, it says, May the God of peace himself make you entirely pure and devoted to God, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept strong and blameless until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, why did Paul say spirit first? You know, these men of God that were moved by the Holy Ghost, they were moved by the Holy Ghost and inspired by the Holy Spirit to write these things. And if you'll notice there in that scripture, it says, and the God of peace sanctify you holy. Spirit, holy, not H-O-L-L-O-Y, but W-H-O-L-L-Y. Holy, your whole spirit. Now, listen to me, some of you. Some of you are kind of drifting off. Don't think about lunch yet. Looky, listen to me. Look at me in the eyeball. Your whole spirit and soul and body, that your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept strong and blameless. Your whole spirit, soul, and body. Now notice that. Your whole spirit. See, what we don't, don't understand sometimes is we are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. I'm going to say it again. We are a spirit. That's who the real you is. That's why when this body lies down, your spirit goes to be with the Lord, as long as you're saved. But your whole spirit, soul, and body. So your spirit, which is the real you, your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, and then your body. Your body, you have to have a body to be on earth. When your body dies, you leave. So, in order for us to be successful as Christians and, and give the love that God's given us, we're going to have to be more aware of our spirit man than our fleshly man, the body. You and I need to begin to see ourselves as a spirit. That's the real us. With a soul that lives in a body. Your body is not the real you. Your body is like, I say, uh, I'll say it like this, is an earth suit. Amen. Now, I want to read something else here. In Ephesians, we're talking about the inward man. The inward man. Say inward man. Inward. Have I lost you or have you gone home? Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. All right. Ephesians 3.16 says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. There it is again in the inner man. Then, in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, it says, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be cast away. All right. Notice he said, but I. Is that what it says up there? But I... Keep under what? My body. 
and bring it into subjection, lest by any means when I preach to others, I myself will be a castaway. Notice these scriptures talking about spirit, soul, and body, the inner man, the hidden man of the heart, the Bible says. So one of the key ways that we can give this love away is by recognizing that we are a spirit man and walking after that spirit man. Because if we walk after the flesh, if we walk after that body that has feelings and is fickle, you know, it's got the five physical senses, how many knows that the feelings are fickle? I mean, how many knows feelings are fickle? You can get up feeling good, and by the time you get home from work, you just, you don't feel so good. It's fickle. One day we're happy, the next day we're not happy. It's fickle. But when we walk according to the Spirit, when we walk after that inward man, which is renewed day by day by the Word of God, then we're going to walk according to the word because the spirit of man wants to please God and wants to walk according to that, that word. The physical man wants to walk after the physical things. And a lot of times the church is, not this church, but the church itself as a whole, it's, a lot of times it walks after the world because it has its eyes on the world and it lives in the world and so those things influence us. But you know what? We have a greater one on the inside of us to influence our spirit man that can, now listen, that can in return influence the physical man. Because your spirit man has more power than your natural man. You and I can say no to sin. Have you ever noticed, uh, maybe not, <laughs> have you ever noticed since you've been saved you still want to sin? Oh, not, not you, I'm sorry. No, you still want to sin. Why? Well, because that physical man wants to sin. That's the, the, that nature, that fallen nature. See, when you got born again, your spirit man got saved, but your natural, this, this physical body didn't get saved. And that's why it's so important that we need to renew our mind to the word so that we can bring this body into subjection to the word. We've got to be more than just, I'm a Christian. We've got to be more than, not only am I a Christian, but I'm going to walk like a Christian. I'm going to act like a Christian. I'm going to talk like a Christian. And I'm going to live like a Christian. Amen. We can't be hypocrites. A hypocrite is one that says one thing at church and goes home and acts like another. And I used to know preachers that would go, go to church and preach, to, preach the Bible and go home and beat their wives. God forbid. I said God forbid. Everybody say God forbid. Now there's always hope for those people. But you know what? There's one thing that I've wanted to all my life, and that's to please God. I want to please God. I'm going to please God. I'm going to please God. I'm going to please God. It doesn't matter. if I'm going to please God. <clears throat> And you know what? Blaming God for, for different things and blaming people for this and blaming, I don't like the way the pastor does this. Hey, is anybody perfect here? If you pastor this church, you do it a different way, I'm sure. Amen? I mean, unless, unless they are leading us into sin, I'm going to follow them. I'm not going to sit around and, well, I don't like the color of the carpet, even though we don't have any. I don't like to color the walls. I don't like to praise and worship. I don't like this thing up here. I don't like the way I don't like the way the drums are, and I don't like. See, that's walking after the flesh. It's following our leaders, even though they're not perfect. We don't have to nitpick every little thing they do. Let's get behind God that is leading them. God is leading them. They may not be perfect, but God is leading them. Let's just follow them. Unless they get off into sin, I'm not going to follow them either. <laughs> I'll be the first one to leave. I don't mess around. 
I got saved. When I got saved, I got saved, brother. I didn't mess around. I've been serving Jesus for 45 years, and it gets better all the time. If, you're, if you've been serving Jesus for any, any amount of time and you're bored, there's something wrong with your life. <laughs> Amen. And you know, I used to think Christians were wimpy. Yeah, oh, only weak and, you know, wimpy people serve God. Are you kidding me? When I got saved and started serving Jesus, I found it takes a real man to serve God. It takes a real man and a real woman to serve God. Amen. We got to get tough. Otherwise, you're going down. We're going to, if we don't get tough and start walking according to the word and by the power of the spirit, guess what? Bye-bye. If we don't start walking in the love of God, you know, let me, let me say this. Did you know that people that end up in a divorce court did not walk in the love of God? Now, if you've been divorced, listen to me. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. But I do want you to understand it takes the love of God to have a good marriage. And that if you went through a divorce, okay, you went through a divorce. Get married again and don't go through it again. Now, I know it takes two people, but two people have to walk in the love of God. But I've never seen the love of God in a divorce court. Hello. I've never seen the love of God in a divorce court. You won't see that kind of stuff. Not if we really walk in the love of God. Well, I just can't. Oh, please, give me a break. You need to read your Bible. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> Amen. It says that we don't want to. Hello. I know you may not have me back up here, but that's okay. I love you anyway, and I'm going to get it all out. <laughs> Why? Well, because I love you, and I'm going to speak to you as a father does to children. Because I don't want you to play out in the street and get ran over. Hello? Why do, we, why do we discipline our children? Why do we watch over our children? Man, because we don't want them to get hurt. And God's the same way. His mind is full of you. You start getting off, and I guarantee you there's the Holy Spirit to remind you, to convict you. Say, no, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. Don't flip that person off because they flipped you off. Let's get down to where we live in the nitty-gritty here. Huh? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's, let's be patient. Let's be kind. Let's show the love of God. I said, let's show the love of God. We're Christians. You know what that means? That means to be Christ-like. That means to be Christ-like. Are you listening to me? It means to be Christ-like. Now, he gave me two hours to preach. I don't know why they're coming up here. <laughs> but, but right now I have authority. <laughs> well, he may not, Pastor may not ever let me come up here, so I'm going to get it all out. Like, uh. But, but. But you know, the number one key is to leave, living a successful life and getting the people, getting the love of God to people. Listen to me. And that is to be spirit minded. To be spirit minded. In Romans chapter 6, I mean, verse 8 and verse 6, it says, Now here we go. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I just don't have the peace, and I don't have. I just don't have the peace, and, and, and you know, I I just don't have the that life and peace in me. You're not spiritual minded. Yeah. Now notice, for to be carnally minded. Now that word carnally means to be body ruled. So we can read it like this: for to be body ruled minded is death. 
and anything that death has to deal with. Amen? But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, to be body ruled is to be ruled by that lower nature. That lower nature, which is of the body. It talks about, let me, uh, I want to uh, go to another, another scripture here. We need to see according to Galatians in chapter 5, verse 16 through 17. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh wars against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you want to do. In other words, you're born again spirit man on the inside. Your spirit man is warring against that flesh. That's why, that's why we have such a struggle. It's because our flesh wants to do one thing and our spirit wants to do another. Our flesh wants to obey God. But I, I mean... Uh, our spirit wants to obey God, but our flesh wants to obey that lower nature, wants to obey sin, it wants to sin. You ever wonder about that? I had a struggle with that when I first got saved. Why in the world I'm saved, but yet I still want to sin? Because that lower nature. Now, I, I, I've studied this, and I, I'm teaching this this morning because I really, you and I really, really need to grab a hold of this. We need to walk after that inward man. And when we do, when we start allowing that inward man to be more influenced uh, in our life than our natural, or the, than that fallen nature, then we'll have peace. We'll have joy. We'll be patient in line at the grocery store. Huh? I remember one day I was pastoring and uh, I was at the grocery store. Man, I was in a hurry. And this girl was talking, just talked to all the customers. You ever had them? Just talk and being friendly, which is nice. I mean, but I was in a hurry. And I got up there, and she said, how are you? And I tell you, my flesh wanted to say, not very good because you keep on jacking your jaws. Did anybody ever want to do that as a Christian? Well, at least one person's honest. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I got up there and she said, uh, before I, <laughs> she, right off the bat, she said, hey, aren't you that pastor that, pa <laughs> I go, I go, yes, I am. She says, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. <laughs> but not, I didn't want to say that according to my flesh. But see, just because your flesh wants to do stuff like that doesn't mean you have to live that way. It may rise up every once in a while, and it may want to do something. It may want to flip somebody else off. There's pastor ain't around. Flip them off or, or you honk, honk at them, you know. Don't do it. You'll never walk in it unless you practice it. You gotta practice being a Christian. I'm so glad everybody's here this morning. I'm so glad you came this morning because you need to hear this. Not me because I've arrived. No, I need to hear it too. We all need to hear it. But I wanted to share it with you. Isn't this good? Isn't this good? You know what's so good about God is you can mess up, but he, he still loves you, and he's still there, okay, like a father. Well, I've never seen Pastor Larry and Rachel. They're such good parents. Man, I wish I could have been that good. I mean, she turned out okay. <laughs> but, man, they, they're such good parents and spend time with their kids. And, and, but you know what? They train them. They want them to, to live right and talk right and live right. They discipline them. God wants us to discipline ourselves. Not just live free and just do what we want, you know, flower child. And, and back in the hippie days, that's what we called them, you know. 
but to really sincerely, everybody say sincerely. sincerely. Say it again. Sincerely. Now some of you, listen to me, you've gone out to lunch, come on back, we're having service. <laughs> sincerely, we've got to be doers of this word. If we're not, we're deceiving ourselves. James says if you're not a, a if you, not only are we to hear it, but do it. If we don't, we're deceiving ourselves. Is this too much? Am I giving you too much? I'm giving you the whole bell of hay this morning. Amen. Amen. And so the spirit wars against the flesh, the flesh against the spirit. We, we, we want to do what's right, but the flesh sometimes overtakes us because we're yielding more to the flesh than we are our spirit. Amen. I said we're yielding more to the flesh than we are our spirit. Walk out of these doors and begin to practice God's word. And when you start practicing, you'll see a difference in your life. You'll see a peace and a joy. You may even have more friends. It's because they'll start liking you more. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so, in 1 Timothy 4, 8, then I'll, I'm going to close here. Just give me another 30 minutes. 1 Timothy 4, 8 says, Body exercise profiteth little. And can you say amen to that? I mean, we exercise physically, and it does a little bit of good. But bodily exercise is all right, but spiritual exercise is much more important and is a tonic for all you do. So exercise, everybody say exercise. So exercise yourself spiritually and practice being a better Christian. Practice it. Amen. Practice being a better Christian. Now, are you listening to me? Don't get caught up in time. Don't get caught up. We've got to hurry up and finish this. You better hear what the Spirit's saying. I said hear what the Spirit is saying. The Spirit of God is trying to say, tell us something. So exercise yourself spiritually and practice being a better Christian. Because, because it will help you not only in this life, but in the next life to come. So, how do we practice being a better Christian? By giving his love away, by walking after the Spirit. Reflecting his love. Here we go. The love of God. This is what's in you. The love of God's been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. What kind of love is that? The love of God. Love is very patient and kind. Listen. Don't think this is for your neighbor. Love is very patient and kind. Never jealous or envious. Never boastful or proud. Never haughty or selfish or rude. Love is... Love does not demand its own way. It is not irritable or touchy. Ooh, look out. It does not hold grudges and will hardly even notice when others do it wrong. It is never glad about injustice, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. If you never, it says, if you love someone, you will be loyal to him no matter what the cost or her or them. You will always believe in him, always respect him, the best of him, and always stand your ground in defending him. Father, we love you so very much. And I thank you, Father God, that each and every person today heard what the Spirit was saying. That we'll not take it for granted. We'll not take your word for granted, but we'll live this word out in our life. We call ourselves Christians, oh God, that we would practice being a Christian. We have a choice. We can live spiritually or we can live carnally. And people wonder why they have the problems that they have. Because they're walking after the flesh. But I believe that this church, Hope You See Santa Fe, will begin to walk after the Spirit and begin to 
live the good life because you've planned a good life for us but we have to do something too to get to be a part of that good life it doesn't just fall on us like ripe cherries off a tree we've got to practice your word you watch over your word to perform it in our life it doesn't just happen we hear it and we do it and then the fruit will come forth and I thank you that fruit we are fruit bearing people here in this church that Lord we are obedient people we're humble people and even though someone may do us wrong we pray for them even though these despitefully use us we do good to them because the only Jesus that they're going to see is what they see in us Thanks for joining Hope You See On Demand today. It was so good to have you. And if you don't want to miss any future forward videos, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel or download our church app. And also don't forget, make sure you invite a friend to watch with you or send this link to somebody that needs to hear the hope of Jesus. That's right. And if you call Hope You See Home, there's so many ways you can stay connected. One of the ways you can stay connected is by giving. Just scan the QR code. You can follow the steps and continue to give and help us spread this gospel across the world. Again, thank you for watching today. God bless. Have an amazing day. We'll see you next time.